Today we're going to talk about the 5D Mark III versus the 6D and which camera is best for you. I get asked all the time which is better, the 5D Mark III or the Canon 60. And as a shooter who has recently purchased a Canon 60, I thought it'd be good if I went ahead and broke down the differences between the two to try to help people decide which camera is best for them. And I will say that every time I've made mention of a Canon 60 or done a video on it, I usually get a comment that is something like, Caleb, why on earth would you choose the Canon 60 when the 5D Mark III is so much better? The Canon 60 is crap, blah, 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 blah. And I just want to address that really quickly and say that every tool has its use and the 60 is no different. And it blows my mind that as soon as the 5D Mark III came out, everybody just began to trash the Canon 60, saying it was garbage compared to the 5D Mark III. Yes, the 5D Mark III is better, but what blows my mind is the Canon 60 is so, so much better than cameras we had before. We used to praise the 5D Mark II, and now it's not even you know in the running, really. So don't just throw a camera under the bus just because it's not as good as another camera. That's not a good way to look at gear and how you should invest in equipment. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the biggest differences between the two cameras and then I want to talk about why I chose the Canon 60 over the 5D Mark III. So the first thing I want to look at is really the big one and that is aliasing and more ray. The Canon 5D Mark III has a filter built in which will eliminate that artifact. So you can film brick walls to your heart's content and you're not going to run into issues. The Canon 60 does not have a filter built in, so you will still have those problems. But you can purchase a filter that is a third party and install it on your camera. There's some problems, you can't really use wide angle lenses, but that is a solution if you really need it. The next big difference is price. The price difference is around $1,500. It's going to change on and off depending on which deals are going on, so that's a big factor too, is uh, how much you're willing to invest uh, in a camera. Another big difference is the speed of the focusing when it comes to autofocus. So the Canon 5D Mark III has much more advanced focusing features and a lot more focusing points. So if you're going to be doing a lot of stills, that might sway you toward the 5D Mark III, whereas the Canon 60 is going to be a little slower. So think about that if you're going to be doing any kind of sports photography or anything like that. The next big one is the build quality. The 5D Mark III has a much better build quality than the Canon 60. The Canon 60 still is built very well, but it kind of lands in between the Rebel line and the high-end line. So if you've held a um, 60D or a 70D, the Canon 60 kind of feels and looks like those cameras. It's not going to be as nice as a 5D Mark III or a 70 or anything like that. So the grip is a little bigger, the body's a little bulkier and you know made of a nicer material, and the buttons just have a nicer layout. And that brings us to another difference that's somewhat minor, but I'd like to address it because it's something I really noticed. And that is how you access the white balance. On the Canon 5D Mark III, like the 5D Mark II, there is a white balance button and that'll allow you to change white balance almost immediately. Whereas on the Canon 6D, you have to hit the Q button and then go to white balance and make the change there. So it's a little, it's another step. Um, it might be annoying if you change white balance a lot, one thing I found somewhat annoying is when you go to Kelvin, you can't just switch Kelvin immediately. You have to go to Kelvin, then you have to hit the info button on the Canon 6D, and then you can change Kelvin temperature. So a couple other extra steps. You get pretty fast at it though. It's just something that's a little different and something to keep in mind. The next thing I want to talk about is clean HDMI out. The Canon 60 does not have clean HDMI out, so you can't use an external recorder and get the image pristinely. On the Canon 5D Mark III, you can hook up a, an external recorder and record with the HDMI cable. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you ever plan on doing external recording. The next thing I want to talk about is RAW. With Magic Lantern, you can do RAW video on the Canon 5D Mark III. This is not available on the Canon 60. Another difference between the 5D Mark III and the Canon 60 is the headphone jack. There is a headphone jack on the Canon 5D Mark III, whereas there is not one on the Canon 60. There is a way to get around this if you use Magic Lantern. You can assign the video port to be used as a headphone jack, 
on your Canon 6D, but it's something to think about if you're not going to be using Magic Lantern at all. One other difference to keep in mind is the camera slots, the card slots on each camera. The 5D Mark III has two, a CF and an SD card slot. And what's cool is you have a couple different settings you can use. You can have the data be recorded at both cards simultaneously, one for a backup, one for your primary, or you can have it record to each one after the other. So if one card fills up, it starts to fill up the other card. Nice feature, something to keep in mind if you're looking at the two cameras, whereas the 60 does not have dual camera slots. It only has one SD slot. Okay, so those are the big differences between these two cameras, but we do need to keep in mind that there's some things that are almost identical. First of all, they're both full frame cameras, so there's really no difference in sensor size. Secondly, the image quality is going to be about the same, except for the aliasing and more ray, which you'll see on the Canon 60 and not on the 5D Mark III. And thirdly, these both have almost the exact same sensor when it comes to low light sensitivity. So the 5D Mark III isn't gonna see a lot better low light sensitivity compared to the 60. They're almost completely identical. So now that we have all that out of the way, I wanna talk about why as a shooter, I chose the Canon 60. I spent a lot of time with both of these cameras and I decided to go with the 60 for a couple reasons. One was the price. I got this camera at $1,500 and it came with a bunch of other stuff from B&H Photo Video. So I saved a lot of money, that was a big factor, but I also wanted to spend the extra money that I did save to invest in more gear and save toward another camera. So that's something you have to think about. Price, there's around $1,500 difference. So you really wanna think about that. And when it came to aliasing and moray, I had already spent so much time filming with DSLRs that I've really become comfortable with working around some of these artifacts. So having a filter built into the camera that removes those artifacts wasn't worth $1,500 to me. And that brings me to my next point, which is this is an intermediate camera for me. I'm planning on eventually upgrading to a large sensor cinema camera, something like a C100 or you know something along those lines and see what comes out this year. So this camera purchase wasn't going to be something that was gonna be very permanent. I usually switch cameras every two to three years, so I didn't wanna spend a lot of money on a 5D Mark III only to turn around and get something like a C100. So that's something to think about. Where does this camera land in your kit? Are you working towards something else down the road or do you need this for a long time? So in that case, the Canon 60 was worth it for me because I could put that extra $1,500 toward a camera I knew I was going to work toward. And then of course, there's the whole HDMI and RAW thing. A lot of people would say, but Caleb, why would you buy a 6D when you can't do RAW or do re external recording with the HDMI? Well, as a shooter and as someone who invests in gear, you have got to think about how you're going to use the camera. I was honest with myself. I don't use external recorders and I don't really want to put Magic Lantern on a brand spanking new 5D Mark III and do RAW, especially since the RAW workflow is still kind of involved. So. I just prefer to grab the camera and go shoot. So it's one of those things, it's kind of like cars. You know, We love to you know, go out with our buddies and say, well, my car has 600 horsepower, yada, yada, yada. But are you actually going to use all of that power? So something to think about. Don't buy a camera just so you can you know, kind of tout the uh, features that your camera has that you'll never use. Really get analytical with how you're going to use your camera and then purchase accordingly. So that's a lot of information, but at the end of the day, I didn't think it was worth spending $1,500 more for those few features that the Canon 5D Mark III had over the Canon 60. So I hope this video has helped you kind of get a better grip on um, the differences between these cameras and how you should possibly use them. If you like this video, go to dslrvideoshooter.com and you'll find other tutorials and reviews on the site. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.